and welcome to UniTalk, the live debate with me, Will Kisby. And me, John Holmes. In a first for Smoke Radio, tonight's show is being broadcast on Smoke Radio as well as being filmed live for Smoke TV. For those of you new to UniTalk, it's a weekly current affairs phone-in show on Smoke Radio. But for tonight's very special edition, we're joined by a live studio audience made up of students from in and around London and they'll be putting their questions to our panel. And on our panel tonight, we have Jason Theo George from Conservative Future. <laughs> Martin Shaplin from Liberal Youth. <laughs> New Humanist editor Casper Melville. <laughs> and Gemma Ricketts from London Young Labour. <laughs> OK, so let's take our first question from the floor this evening. Luke Beckett. Um, do you think it's time to change the way we elect our MPs or do you think introducing the alternative vote would force all the parties to become more populist and less diverse? OK, brilliant first question. Um, Jason Theo George from Conservative Future. Is now the time to change our voting system? That's an interesting question. And the question should be, is it the time to change to the alternate vote? Because what has been put to the British public is not a real change in a positive direction. It's actually a retrograde step backwards. Uh, the Electoral Reform Society came out on many occasions to say AV is unacceptable, as did the leader of the Liberal Democrats. Um, and therefore, you know, it's, it's really a flawed, a flawed alternative, and that's why the first-past-post should be retained. Martin, what do you think? Well, I actually agree with you. I think it's actually two centuries too late. We should have changed this antiquated first-past-post system back in the 18th century after it had been in for a couple of hundred years. I mean, look at it. We have a situation at the moment where uh, the Conservative Party, to be fair to them, won more votes in this election than Labour did in 2005, and yet couldn't get a majority. And yet Tony Blair in 2005, less votes, lost in England, had more MPs in England, had a majority government, he could do what he wanted, he could uh, break manifesto policies despite having a majority. Uh, look, what I would say to you, AV isn't the ideal system, I recognise that, I want to see proportional representation for both chambers, uh, but what I would say to you, Luke, is that the alternative vote is much fairer than the current system. It'll make your MP work harder. It'll have to get 50% of the population in his seat uh, in order to get elected, instead of as little as 20% or 12% as has happened in the past uh, with first past the post. It won't make parties more populist. They're already very centralised. They're already almost all together. I, you know, something I hear on the doorstep is, and they all look the same, they all say the same things. It'll actually make um, parties talk to people more than just in 100 uh, you know, key marginals. Martin, for people who aren't sure or maybe don't understand it, what, how, how does AV work? Well, it's as simple as one, two, three. Instead of putting an X in your ballot paper, uh, you mark a one by your preferred candidate, you mark a two by your next preferred candidate, and a three by your third preferred candidate, and so on. Uh, you know, all that means is that if your preferred candidate, let's say you want to vote Green, uh, gets knocked out in the first round, you will still have a say uh, in who you would prefer to be your MP. Instead of having a ridiculous situation where we had a one mayoral election where someone won on 12% of the vote, uh, you know, because there were so many candidates. And, you know, it's, a, it's the worst case of any situation. It's, it's a negative way forward, and it's not as simple as one, two, three, because what people don't realise is it's the parties, it's people who vote, it's, it's the worst votes, uh, sorry, it's... The way it's so complicated, I haven't even quite got my head around it. It's it's basically you rank you rank your parties, and the party that doesn't get in, their vo the votes the people who vote for that party get their votes redistributed, i.e. it's BNP voters and the po the voters of the least popular parties who actually get more say because their vote means more because it's their vote that gets redistributed to determine who actually gets a seat, and that's why it's a bad way forward. Can I just can say I come in here? Sorry, can sure, I just yeah. come in? Um, I think what I'd find really interesting actually is how many people in this room didn't vote last time in the 2010 election because you couldn't preference your candidates. I think there's this real problem that we think somehow why people don't vote is because they don't have AV, which I think is completely wrong. Um, you look at places like Barking Dagenham where there was a real threat from the BNP and it wasn't because we didn't have AV that these people chose not to vote. Um, and and um, consequently, there was a real threat from BNP and fringe parties. It's because we politicians aren't talking about the right issues to engage people to make them vote. And I think a real risk with AV is that actually you worsen that problem because you will get more coalitions. You may 
end two-party politics and you will get more stitch-ups in back rooms where it allows the Lib Dems to uh, go back on their election manifesto promises over tuition fees and a lot of these other issues um, which then get completely stitched up and are totally become the whole process becomes even less democratic than it is now or at least you can actually hold politicians accountable for what they fought an election on uh, when they're actually in government. Martin, you're raising your eye at that one. Mm. I am. Look, just two quick points. The reason mm. people don't vote isn't because politicians mm. aren't talking about the right issues. They are. It's because politicians don't feel the need to talk to them and engage them. At the moment, mm. you know, uh, my party is guilty of this. How many doors did you knock on during the election then? That seems like you would engage thousand, pretty... Actually. Exactly. So it's um, not like you're not engaging with people no, no, if you're not talking, not to, talking them. to people. But it's not about mm. the issues to talk about. It's whether or not you are talking to people across the country at the moment. And my party was guilty of this. We targeted 100 seats out of 650 which meant that 550 seats didn't mm. have anyone talking to them at all because those are the seats that we needed and the Labour Party needed and the Conservative Party needed to win a majority. Uh, and the other point I'd say about the BNP, there were only two parties in this referendum that are voting no or wanting you to vote no, the Conservatives and the British National Party. And the Labour Party as well. well no, the Labour they Party don't have a position. They, they don't have, have don't an official, official position. position. Well, the, the BNP seat. want to keep first mm. past the post because they think they will be able to get a seat on the first pass of post and it'll, AV will make it harder. So don't go around, you know, saying the BNP, you know, voters will get more say. But they they do. won't, they, they get more to the votes. BNP. Do you they feel there's a lot votes. of myths about Everyone it? Everyone gets one vote. No, you don't that's get not more true. Votes. If Martin, you're in a do you seat, feel there's a lot of myths mm. about AV? Mm. The I think there's a lot of myths being peddled by the No campaign. We've had some quite mm. disgraceful adverts with uh, babies, mm. uh, you know, what this mm. uh, woman needs is, uh, what this baby needs is a maternity ward, not a... Uh, alternative voting system and made up figures about voting Well, if I can just uh, jump machines. in, if you don't mind. I mean, you know, the Yes to AV campaign is spending 250 million quid. It's not. But they are. It's, it's in writing, in black and white, and it's been reported by countless newspapers. It's spending 250 million pounds? On their campaign for Yes. And well, that's that may or may not be the case. And, you know, if we can raise that sort of money, I think that's brilliant. But actually, your attack ad is 250 million will be spent on voting machines which won't exist, no one's budgeted for, and Australia, which has had the alternative vote for 90 years, has never used. But can I just come in on this point as well? Casper, as somebody who's, who's mm. not part, a party political mm. here. Well, I'm not party political and I'm not a mm. policy wonk. And I, you know, from my perspective, I find this a very interesting discussion. Mm. I mean, I think of myself as broadly a political person without knowing much about the detail. And I think in the past, people who don't know much about the detail take their cues from the political parties mm. they support. And then you've got a classic example here of no leadership that I can trust because, as you said, the Labour, I'm a Labour voter in the past. The Labour Party has split on it. Um, I'm not going to take my cues. Uh, you know, even the Tories have split on it to a certain degree. Nobody seems to know. Going back to the question, I think now is a really good time to make some serious changes in politics because we're all very angry. Uh, we still remember the, the expenses scandal. Uh, we feel disenfranchised. We've been let down variously by the various parties, or there's a bit of a shambles, or there's a coalition, or there's a fudge. It seems like a very good time to do it. Is AV the right thing? You know what? I've got no idea. <laughs> and okay. the, the problem is that people are saying, for example, it will lead to more coalitions. Well, we have a coalition government now. OK, so it might not be that. And then people throw these different examples. It's very technical. Nobody knows. And because we're no longer in a position where everyone just follows their party leadership and falls into two camps, you know, part of the political uh, tenor of the times, it's a very confusing issue. I've got no idea how I would vote in the AV, but change, I think, is, is a good time for change. Gemma, final word from you. I think if we really want to think about how we change, how we do politics, we've got to think about things like compulsory vo voting and a whole bigger picture about how we change the culture of voting in this country and not just look at... a introducing an uh, even more flawed system than we already have. Thanks, Gemma. Thanks for all your thoughts on that one.